What's why why it didn't work? I sent it to him. Like, I went to the digital sign, I put that initial all of that, and then I think you might have been using the wrong control boxes. Possibly with that, but we'll we'll sit down. I'm going to go over that with you maybe after class or another day, and I'm going to do a specific video. So now we have this awesome cool new program where I can do it's almost like a personal webinar where it's just my screenshot, and then there's a little picture of me in the bottom corner. Um, but I'm going to start redoing a lot of these videos that we have. I'm going to do them more to today, bring them more up to date using the programs that we have, so like the DigiSign and all these other ones. Um, making that a lot more simpler for you guys. So, awesome. All right, we guys. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to session two. Um, today we're going to learn all about dominating expired listings. So, yay! Expired yeah. listings are my jam. I love these. I'm, I'm not patient enough for the for sale by owner anymore, but that's you know where I am in my career. Um, but for all of you guys starting out, the four sale blender is great. But again, what are we saying? You got to brush their hair and tell them they're ready until they accept your marriage proposal, right? I'm not about that. I'm about, hey girl, what's up? Let's go back to my place. Let me sell your house for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so today, um, our purpose and objections is that we're going to overview the resources, techniques, and dialogue for successfully prospecting uh, previously expired listing sellers for to list with you, uh, effective methods and measured statistics on ROI in communicating with expired leads, uh, review common mistakes and develop stronger success in prospecting expired sellers, and we're going to go over uh, strategy tips for taking action, building confidence, building habits, and learning success with expired uh, for prospecting expired sellers. Okay, so an expired listing. You guys, what's an expired listing? It means it was on the market under uh, under mm -hmm. a an agent and the time limit for that. Uh, so basically, the agent couldn't get the job done, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So, and why is it typically that a home doesn't sell? Price marketing. Price and marketing. Yeah. Okay. We already kind of talked about withdrawn listings, so that's where the owner then pulls the listing before the contract time is done. Usually because they're having a bad experience with the agent, they're not happy with how things are going. Um, and like I said, sometimes it can just be remodeling the house, taking it off, and actually listening to the feedback that's coming in, but that's not typically the case. Okay, so what are some of the pros and cons of expired listings? What are some of the pros? The pro for us is that they want to, they are willing to pay for somebody to sell their home. So they're already willing to pay a commission. That's awesome. It's not like the for sale by owner where we're going in there and beating them up and selling them on all our stuff, you know, before they, they convince to use us. What's another pro of the expired listing? It's free. It's free. Your time and gas. That's it. Time and gas. And sometimes not even gas if you're calling them on the phone too. Doing that combination of phone calls and door knocking. I mean, everything's free. What else is free? Well, like paid ads and things like that, uh, that that's something different. Uh, this is you're not paying for. The leads have expired, you're just spending your time doing the research, and then you're going out and you're talking to them, okay? Uh, what are some other pros of, of uh, expired listings? They want to sell. Mm -hmm. They have a motive, they're typically, typically motivated to get it sold. At least they're definitely more motivated the second time around. Here's another reason why I love expired listings. So sometimes the owners, and I'm sure most of you have had this experience already. I love your bottle. Um, and I'm um, sorry. And uh, and in in they're they're gung ho. They're so headstrong, right? They're like, no, I don't care. I think my home is worth gold, right? I have these diamond crested toilet seats and these gold handles, right? And some brass everywhere. Um, and uh, and they just have this what I call emotional equity built into their home, right? And so the first agent goes there, and they're just not quite strong enough to be honest with the seller and that's where we're different and so they're not honest with the seller or the seller is just so demanding and domineering that i don't care if i don't sell this house for this much money i'm not going to sell it and they're like okay well let's see what we can do right so when they tie them up for six months the homeowner's aggravated he's yelling screaming at him now he hates realtors he thinks all these bad things and has a bad experience no one's showing his house da, 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 right and it's because of price most times between price and marketing and so now the owner has been through that experience. They tried it their way. Mr. Seller, how'd that work out for you? Right? They've, they've now been through being beat up by an agent probably every month. That was a proactive agent. They were calling them every 30 days saying, we need to drop price. We need to drop price. We need to drop price. Right? Um, and then now that's over. 
right? They, of course, now the owner blames everything on that realtor. The realtor couldn't get the job done, right? So now I come in six months later. They've now blown through six months. They now realize that price did not work, right? And now they're going to have a fresh start with me. I'm going to be honest with them. I'm going to show them the facts, the research. Here's where your home is going to sell. Mr. So you have a goal. You want to get to this place for this reason in this time frame, and I want to get you there. And here's how we're going to do it. Now, you tried it your way the first time. How did that work out for you? Okay, not very well. So now we understand. You see my 18-point marketing plan, right, our listing presentation. Here's our 18-point marketing plan that we're going to go over with you. You see all the things that we're going to do to bring maximum exposure to your home. Remember, Mr. Seller, remember, it's a combination of price and marketing. So it doesn't matter how much exposure and how many people I can get in your home if we're not priced right. Okay? So now they're more motivated. They're six months' time out the door. They're definitely more motivated. They realize their price doesn't work. And they've already been beat up by one agent for six months. So a lot of times I come in there and they're just like, oh, I just want to get this thing gone. What do we got to do? Like, literally, that's what they say. Is, I need to get this thing gone. What do we need to do? Well, Mr. Seller, here's where we need to price it. Here's the marketing plan I'm going to put behind it to make it happen. Sign here. Okay, great. When can you start? I already have my sign on order. It's in my car right now. I'm going to put my panel here. The sign guy should be out tomorrow, and we're going to start with some student marketing. How's that sound? Phenomenal. Right? Okay. So uh, what's another pro real quick of, of the um, expired listing? The word begins with a C. You have ultimate control. Control. Yes. Right? Because think about when you get a referral, right? Or somebody pops in off of Facebook or something, right? They all want to buy this $50,000 investment home. I want to buy, you know, 3,000 acres out in Miami, right? You know, you don't, you can't control location. You can't control price point. With expired and for sale banners, you have ultimate control. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to focus your time, right? You control the price point. You control the area. Um, cons of expired listings. They have a bad experience. You have to help them overcome that. You guys, as realtors, we wear many hats, right? I now have a couch in my office for therapy sessions. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we have to be prepared to wear many hats. We do. We have to build up our empathy, not sympathy, but empathy for these people. I understand that what they've been through. We have to let them vent. We have to let them talk about it. Mr. Seller, I'm so sorry you had that experience. Believe it or not, I hear that more often than what you think. You see, like every industry, it's the 80-20 rule. There's 20% of us out there doing 80% of the business, so good thing you met me, right? Hand on hip. Hand on hip. It's not a coffee thing. It's a confident thing because I'm confident I'm going to do a freaking fantastic job for you. Okay? Um, so cons is you don't have a little bit of skill, right? And how do we develop our skill, guys? How do we get better? Yes, we learn by doing. Every experience is going to get us better and better. And this is how you hone your craft, how you develop your skill. This is how you make your money, guys. Is real estate something more than a what? Conversation. Conversation. Pick up your conversation skills. Watch some videos on YouTube. Read a book. Right. It's all, it's all in the conversation. So you have to develop some skill, and you're going to do that by practicing your what every day. Scripts, rebuttals, role playing is the best one, you guys. That's why we have accountability buddies. Role playing is going to get you better at thinking on your feet, thinking outside the box. You do have those rebuttals as like kind of backup points in the back of your mind, right? So you kind of have some go-to things to say. Um, however, it's it's always going to be different. Every situation is going to be a little different. So by actually role playing with each other. Is, is going to help you more to think on your feet, and that's what it is. The more you practice, the better you think on your feet. The better you think on your feet, the more convincing you're going to be. Um, the more conversion, the higher conversion you're going to have, right? Okay. All right. So, again, we've got to cover these. They're free. You get to work with the seller side. You get free buyer leads, right? You put the sign in the yard. Somebody else sells it. Plus, you're picking up free additional business. For every sign you have in a neighborhood, if you do our plan and you follow it correctly, you should pick up another two to three listings in that neighborhood, and you should pick up anywhere from eight to ten buyers if you if you maximize and work that out with all the additional listings too. Um, again, it gives you more exposure and marketing for your business, and it's a high ROI. Um, again, the cons is that there is a little bit of competition, but not much, you guys. Only the top twenty percent of agents out there are doing this, and this is why they're the top twenty percent because they're focusing on expire listings for sale owners. They're prospecting through phone calling and door knocking. Um, why some listings expire before they sell? Again, we talked about it a lot of times it's wrong pricing or market conditions. 
Mr. Seller, I understand you think your home is gold. You have a lot of emotional equity built into this home. And you know what? Honestly, I, I'm so confident in myself that I would think I can get your home sold at any price with enough time. Right? Because the price that they need, the market might not be there right now. You know the expression, you can't get blood from a stone? I'm going to squeeze the heck out of that stone to get anything I can because my goal is to get your home sold for top dollar and get it sold as quickly as possible. Get your home sold quickly and for top dollar, right? That's my goal. It's a win-win. I get paid more. You get more money in your pocket. You get, I get a great review. You send your friends and family to me. It's a win-win situation all the way around, right? Um, so that's why it's so important to coach them into pricing the home right um, so we can get it sold quickly. You guys are in <coughs> what kind of a market right now? So, 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 seller's market. There's about 10 home buyers for every one home for sale right now, right? So it's important. These home buyers are savvy. They have access to unlimited information, you guys. Everything is right there. They go to Zillow and Truly and Realtor.com, and it shows them a map. Here's this house. Here's the price it is. And here's all your neighbors. Here's what their homes are listed for or selling for, right? They know. They're not dumb, you know? Go ahead. When you're talking, though, it's about a seller's market, when we were looking at the um, the report last week at the at the meeting, mm -hmm. it said that we are now at two point eight as far as inventory. How do the two of those kind of relate to each other? So it's the supply and demand. So if we're less than three months of inventory, we're a seller's market. If we're above three months of inventory, we're in a buyer's market. So when we're at less than three months, that means we have more people looking to buy homes then we have homes available. So sellers are in control. When it's the opposite, then we have more, more homes for sale than we do people looking for them. So then the buyers are in control. They say, well, I don't like your house, I'm just gonna go to the next one. I have a pick of 10 homes here that I can choose from. Where right now, sometimes you're showing properties, there's what, two or three homes, depending on the area and the price point. And that's it. And that's why we need to be very proactive with for sale by owners and having off market properties and blah blah blah. Um, so, but yeah, so so supply and demand. And what what you need to be telling everyone right now is that we are literally there's certain times in history, right, where things just the sun, the moon, the stars, everything lines up, right? That is where we are now. We are about to slip into a harder buyer's market, a hard, harder market for the buyer, um, because right now we're in that perfect window. Where in, uh, inventory is low, we're in a seller's market. So we're a strong seller's market. Um, there's lack of inventory, which is driving the prices up and, 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 and driving demand up, right? So you can get your home sellers, get your home sold quickly, and for top dollar right now, it's marketed and priced correctly. Not under price, just priced correctly. Um, and the buyers right now, they're having phenomenal historical low interest rates, right? I mean, it's not 3.25 like it was before, but that was because the market was so horrendous and horrible. But now we're in a hot market and there's no reason for them to keep these low rates because they don't need to tease to stimulate the economy. The economy is moving. Homes are selling. A lot of times, so like that mega open house Dave was hoping to have this weekend on Sushi Court, he put it, he, he did his proper coming soon marketing. And then the second it hit the MLS, it was like an hour. And they had three offers over asking price, sight unseen, right? That's the demand of our market if you create it correctly with your marketing. Um, so yeah, so right now buyers are getting a historical low interest rate and like Greg mentioned in our sales meeting is that um, there's threats of third quarter here, which is what happened last year, at the same time when they bumped up the interest rates, uh, that the interest rates are gonna go up again somewhere between four and a half and percent, right? And what is, what, what, is, what is effective when interest rates go up? People's buying power. No, Absolutely. Yeah, so they're paying more in interest and bumps down their purchasing power where before they could qualify for 300 now they can only qualify for 275 $25,000, that's a big difference in home, isn't it? Right? And then also what happens when, when that happens is that it kind of freaks um, kind of freaks people out a little bit. People that were in the market now pull back. Mm -hmm. They're like, let me wait. The, the C's, right, on the DISC, the C's, the cautious ones, they're going to pull back and say, let me, let me just see how this plays out for a little bit. Right? So then we're going to lose the demand. So that's why right now is this magical window. The magical school bus is driving by, and everyone needs to hop on it right now. We need to be pressing this hardcore with our people that are on the fence. Start making some posts about it. Start making some videos about it. Right? Get the message out there. Drive some business to yourself using this awesome key opportunity in the moment. I get yelled at, for those of you who have 
personal time with my husband, he would probably share this with you, that I get yelled at every single day about why am I doing what I'm doing. It's 2005 all over again. I should be out selling real estate. I would make triple almost what I do now if I applied my time and energy that I put into brokering and teaching and training into actual real estate. I hear it every day. I'm like, babe, I don't care. This is what I love. This is what makes me happy. I love real estate too. Love the income from it, but this is my passion. This is my drive. This is what I want to do. So you guys, I'm going to kick you in the butt like my husband kicks me in the butt. Now is the time. This is 2005 right now. Remember, 2005 didn't last very long. Okay? So you guys need to ride this bubble while we're on. I don't call it a bubble, but you need to ride this opportunity. All right. All right, characteristics and facts about expired listings. So we know sellers are okay with being a commission. Hooray! We've overcome that hurdle. Now we just need to keep our commissions high, right? Okay, so those are some great rebuttals and objections that we can work on. Watch different videos on YouTube, different agents that are out there. Everyone has different approaches, right? Based on personality styles. 85% um, will list again. Oh, pretty good odds, right? If I knock on 100 doors, 85% of them are probably going to list again. I just need to make the right contact with them, make the best first impression, and be the one in the door. Um, most will interview and hire the first agent they contact. You guys should be like jumping for joy at these stats. Not 10 agents, you know, when you get into the higher price points, yes, they definitely interview multiple agents. But for the average price points around here, you guys, you get in, just make a good front impression, find some commonality with them, and you're in the door. Um, so, uh, facts about no expires, most relist immediately, uh, most are willing to interview, and it's uh, stronger, uh, stronger competition. So, it is, again, we work on building our skill. Right, through practicing, role play, so that we can be in that higher percentage of the competition there. Uh, facts about older expires, uh, most will hire another agent. Uh, relationship and follow-up wins. So again, these are people where you were not converting them the first time around. Whatever it was, their situation, their scenario, they needed that breathing time. Now they've had that breathing time. Now they don't have three realtors, five realtors banging on their door trying to get business from them, right? So you are one that just shows up out of the blue, you're like, hey, excuse me. Um, if this home had sold, what's the rest of the sentence? If your home had sold, where are you going? Where are you planning on living to? Great. Why is that important to you? Is it friends, family, job relocation, just a place you always wanted to live? And how soon did you want to go somewhere you have hoping to have been there? We hoping to have been there by now, I'm sure, right? Okay. So you're reigniting. That motivation because now they've got out of cell mode, they've gotten back to the everyday hustle and bustle and grind of life. You need to bring them back to their motivation. Hey, great, you know, I know you were hoping to be in Michigan to be closer to the parents because you know the kids are growing up so fast and you want to have that, then they have that relationship with their, their family and see snow and whatever it is, right? So, listen, Christmas, man, it's already right around the corner, isn't it? All right, and, and, and how you know it takes 45 days to get your home under contract and sold here. Then we need to find you or get you in, in touch with a great agent up in that area that's going to get you uh, your next home. And then we all have to unpack and get settled. And how great would it be to have grandma and grandpa and little Susie sit on their lap under the Christmas tree in your brand new house, right? Let me, Mr. Seller, if I can show you how I can get you up north, be closer to your family, um, so you can start enjoying and, and, and not missing out on any more of those great moments. And I can get you there sooner than later, hopefully by Christmas. Would you give me 15 to 20 minutes so I can show you how I can make that happen? I'm available Tuesday or would Saturday be better for you? Right? Go right in for that close. This or that. Do you like the red one or the blue one? That what color do you like? Go red or blue. Make them pick one. Here's the pen. Thank you. Um, also, too, you have like less, less competition. You guys, there's not 10 other people at the door. You just got to catch them in the right moment and, and find that commonality with them. Call them a great commonality. If you want to sell your house, hey, guess what I do? I sell houses. I don't list homes. I sell homes. Right? Big difference. Uh, what must happen if you uh, want to earn the business from expired listing? What do you have to do? Ask. Ask for the business. Oh, I'll oh, put the space bar. Sorry. <laughs> On the other one, I just hit space bar. <laughs> okay. So we must communicate, right? We have to ask for the business. We have to, they won't do business with you unless they know you exist. That's why you gotta get in front of them. You gotta make that contact. Um, what are what are your options for communicating with them? 
right? So we have letter postcards, snail mail. That's the passive agent is going to do that, as almost all agents do. We have the phone call, we have the door knocking, and of course we know which one is best. Door knocking, door knocking, right in front of them. putting your face in front of their face. Absolutely. And even the telephone call, you're trying to get in front of them. So you want to That's the whole point. purpose. Yep, that's the whole purpose of the call. You guys, short and sweet. You're not selling Jack over the phone. You're making an appointment. That's it. Short and sweet, in and out, right? Hey, great, I see your home's uh, came out of the market recently. I'm confident it's sold. I was just curious, are you still interested in selling? Great, when can we meet up? Give me 15, 20 minutes. Let me show you why so many people choose me. Let me show you why, um, how we specialize in homes like yours that didn't sell the first time around, right? All these different things. And we go in for the, the clothes and the appointment. James, but this is the way you do it. For me, when I'm doing the expired, I'm not mentioning at all that I can do a better job. Just no, like, no. Just, I'm going to come, check your house, just, you know, to see. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. But the problem when I do this, it's not a listing appointment. You it's, somehow convert it into a preview appointment. Like for, exactly. you kind of turn it into a for sale by owner script. That's what's happening. So, so, so you what, need yeah. to be more direct with, hey, I'm confident I need your home sold, right? I'm just curious, are you still interested in selling it? Great, when can we sit down in 15 to 20 minutes so I can show you why so many homeowners like you choose me to get their home sold? I'm available Tuesday or Saturday better for you. Okay. You, I think you're just kind of throwing in, I think you're adding a twist where you're combining the script and you're saying, yeah, I work with buyers in the area. Let me come preview your house. That's right. Yeah. That's the for sale by owner. The expired listing, you don't gotta burst in here and tell them they're pretty. <laughs> they are already like, hey, date me. They they they're on the speed dating <laughs> circle, right? They're like, let me just pick the right one. Okay. So there, you're going right in for an appointment. It's not the let me work up to it. It's no. These guys are hot and ready. They they already agreed to pay a commission. They've already had their home on the market once. They know what they're in for. They just need the right person to get the job done. And this is why you need to give me 15 to 20 minutes so I can sit down and explain to you why you need to choose me. Okay, help them overcome. Yep. Yeah. So use, follow the script you're given, and life will be good. Life will be good. We're working on following directions a little, yeah. See, good things come to those who listen. Okay. Um, so if there were a thousand real estate agents in the area, right? Thousand real estate agents in the area. Statistically, only 20 of those, again, the 80 20 rule can be applied just about everything in life. 20% uh, of them are actively going to door knock. All right, so that's not a whole lot. And they're not knocking every single door, right? Um, 50 of them might prospect by phone, right? And then 150 of them might send out postcards or letters, just sit around waiting for their phone and ring, not being proactive. Um, and then 850 of them will do nothing at all. They literally just sit around waiting for their phone to ring. Those, that, that's a part of the, if you guys remember in real estate school, they taught you that about 86% of you will fail the first year because they think they can just hang out in their pajamas and wait for the phone to ring. I think it's like HGTV. Someone's going to call me. I'm going to show three homes and then they're going to pick one. Doesn't happen like that, does it, guys? No, it's work. It's a hustle. You guys, this is a business. Think about the guy down the road who opened a donut shop, right? He's got to find them. He's got to research and find the right location. He's got to find the right people to hire. He has to put in the right equipment. He's got to restructure that building to work for what he wants. He needs to understand analytics of who the market is. He's got to get up there and market. And then he's got to get people in the door. Okay? It's all your, you are a walking, talking business, you guys. We're here to help you, provide you with the tools, support, knowledge, training, all those things that you can be to be as successful as you want to be. But again, you guys are going to get out of it what you put into it. So get out there, do the things that people aren't doing. With that, um, Thomas Jefferson, to have things you've never had, get be willing to do things you've never done, right? Got to be different. A lot of people are out there, they're scared to do this. All right, so door knocking, of course, is our number one thing that we want to do. Uh, when door knocking, you're face-to-face -face communicating with the property owner. Uh, you can best impress them and influence them with the opportunity to hire you for your service, right? So where you're using everything you got, body language, tonality, uh, warming up to them. Uh, it's least competition of agents knocking on the doors for the opportunity to present their service to be hired. So again, lack of competition. Uh, it's going to be your highest success for ROI, this return on investment. With a little bit of time, energy, and gas money, you're going to get huge results, right? One two hundred thousand dollar listing is a potential commission of what? Six, seven, six, six grand. 
If you're a focus, remember we have, um, for me to watch that video again about the law of averages, right? Out of 100 people you go into the door knock and try to communicate with, of those 100, you're going to close between one and three, right? One and three. If you went in a week's time and you said every week I'm going to focus on banging on 100 doors, right? Five day work week, that's 20 doors a day. Is that doable? Yes. 20 doors. That's it. Especially if you go further back in time in a more consolidated area, you can definitely bang up 20, no problem. So if you knock on 20 doors a day for the course of a week, you're going to close one to three deals, right? Let's say one. Even if you suck, right? Even if you suck, you're going to eventually get something, okay? So one deal at $6,000. You do that every single week. $6,000 times four. What's that number? $24,000 in a month. Will that change your life? Yeah. Absolutely. Pay for some kids' college. The mom and dad retire at home. Pay off your house, pay off your credit cards, pay off your car, go on that dream vacation you always wanted, right? All these things that can help alter your life. Um, here's a little quote from someone. Um, I got two listing appointments and one buyer out of it after about three hours of work. Not one person was rude or standoffish. Since then, I continue to door knock and I get at least one hot lead at it every time I go. That's freaking phenomenal, right? Now, this person's probably been doing it for just a little bit, so they've developed a little bit of skill. Right, but again, the more you do it, out of a hundred people, from person one to person ninety-nine, do you think you're going to be a totally different person? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, so again, you learn by doing. Uh, the cost of door knocking is almost free. It's a great way to get your name out there, and it's great exercise. We get to sweat out our toxins uh, sometimes, like this weekend. Um, also, uh, why do so few agents door knock uh, directly to customers for business opportunities? Because they have it. Practice, 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 right? They haven't learned the skills and the experience added to add to your income that provides to your business, right? The more we do it, the more natural we are, right? We're gonna sound funny at first, yes, but you know, we gotta get over that. We gotta keep doing it, and we gotta keep doing it so that we sound natural. And the more natural you sound, the better you can overcome objections, the higher the conversion you're gonna get, right? So the more we do it, the better we're gonna get. Um, I think some agents are scared and think that people are going to be rude and yell in your face. Nothing could be further from the truth is people treat me with respect and are friendly. Even the ones who are not interested still say, still are always friendly. Okay. For the most part, people are. You guys, you get those occasional, can you read the sign that says no soliciting? Yeah, I can read. I'll wait for you to get off the phone if you want. Here's my card in the meantime. I said there was a big smile on my face. Usually you shut the door. Okay, have a wonderful day. Lots to the next one, right? Not a big deal. Can't take it exactly. And, and, and here's some of you might get some that are like a little crotchety, you know, whatever. And that's okay. I think to myself, geez, I don't want that guy's wife, right? And, uh, you know, you gotta remember, everyone's in a different moment when you meet them, right? They could just be having a moment. That's okay. Just like on the phone, when I get somebody who's in a bad mood, you're the 15th realtor that called me, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, no problem. Sorry, I hope your day gets better. Have a good day. You know what I do? I put them in the back of my pile and I call them in a couple days. Do you think they're going to remember the last time I called them? And we've had a couple of those instances too recently where we put them back in the pile, called them, and they, they didn't remember talking to us. Now they're in a better mood. We called them at a good time and ended up landing an appointment. Okay? What about those that invite you in? If I ever talk to you, And that's where we learned in that personality class is identifying the different personality types. And someone like that who's probably a high eye, right? Pretty colors, they're social. Um, you, you, and this is where you're building your skill, your skill um, and honing your craft is that you need to learn to identify their personality type quickly. And then you need to let them talk a little bit and pull them back down to refocus. And then they'll start talking a little bit more. And you need to pull them down to refocus about, okay, that's great, man, you know, your grandkids are so cute, I can't wait to meet them one day. Um, so now in the meantime, so what's going on in your neighborhood right now is this. Let me show you over here on the computer what's going on, right, whatever it is. So you need to kind of let them talk a little bit, but you need to develop your skill of how to kind of wrap up that conversation or, or you be the last one to say something and then you pull it back down to where you left off in your presentation. Now, I was talking about, um knocking their doors mm -hmm. because I've had this happen to me where the this couple invited me and oh it's so hot do you like a drink of water I said yes then mm -hmm. you know I would yeah, always take whatever they give yeah. you even if you just like step on it for a second just, 
it's something about it's a psychology thing that you know you, you take what they give you. Um, in that case, where it's like that type of a scenario, then um, you just you let them talk for a little bit here, you know, for just a few minutes, and then you let them know, hey, you know, I, I don't mean to be rude. I definitely would love to chat with you guys some more. We've had a great conversation so far. Um, but listen, I do have another appointment. I just happened to pop by here on my way. I knew this was on my route. I was a few minutes early, so I didn't want to stop, but I'm so glad that I caught you guys. But listen, let's go ahead and reschedule our next appointment. Um, how about, I'm looking at my calendar and my phone, how about Thursday in the afternoon? Are you guys typically home or do you prefer an evening? Right, so you just you always act like you're a busy person. You're always a busy person. Um, hey, I just popped by for a minute. I was on my way to another appointment. I don't want to be late for them. I want to be respectful of their time and yours. So when can we sit down and we'll we'll chat some more, right? And then that's a perfect. That's a perfect. Oh, intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes that does happen. You're like. You gotta remember some of these people that I've come across these, and this is on occasion, especially a for sale by owner where. I almost think they put the for sale by our side in their yard because they're lonely and they want company to come talk to them. And of course, they sit you down on the couch and they make you some fresh tea and then they're, you know, going on about their life story and the house and this. And then you gotta kind of identify real quickly and pull them into their motivation. Okay, well, how soon were you hoping to sell the house? Where did you want to go to? What kind of time frame are you looking for? You know, because you need to identify quickly as. Are these people just lonely, you know, or do they really have a want and a need that I can help them with? And if they're not to that point now, that's okay. You just get their information, you put them in your database, you use your repeat button in your Google Calendar, where you just touch base with them every couple of weeks. Hey, remember me? We stopped by and had tea. It was so wonderful. Um, you know, how are you guys doing? How many showings have you had on the property? How many offers have you had? Great, okay. I know you said you were really wanting to be at this place and this time frame, but really, really, you know, it's not three months, really it's like a month and a half. Because once you do find the right buyer for your home, it's still another 45 days, six weeks to close. So really, you know, how, how much sooner are you gonna try to do this on your own before you consider a professional, right? So you gotta, yeah, and this is something that you just kind of learn as you do. At first, we're just kind of like these little puppets and we're just going through this experience, but then you learn. So that was an experience that you learn from that I need to start taking control of these conversations, but I'm not sitting here for an hour wasting my time. I need to learn how to qualify them a lot quicker in the beginning or roll my qualifying into my questions to quickly identify if I need to run out of this house or if it's worth maybe hanging out for a few more minutes and I think that they're they're really close and they're they're on that verge and if I spend a few more minutes with them, it'll be worth it. Okay. So this is again, this this is all the learning by doing, right? We have these experiences, then we learn from them, we hone our skill, we hone our craft, and we get better at it as we move forward. That's okay. Uh -huh. So uh, common agent mistakes when door knocking, um, not using a volume of scripts and objection handling techniques, right? So we kind of learn that in script practice a little bit. When you guys just kind of, you kind of know what the rebuttal is, but you're not actually reading it, and you just kind of veer off in a conversation, you end up getting lost. You're like, oh crap, how did I end up here? How do I get it back to where I need to be? So until you guys have internalized the script, I'd say stick to the script as much as you can until you've internalized that. Once you've internalized that and you understand the psychology of it and the point of what you're saying and why and when to say it, then you can get a little bit more natural with it or just kind of veer into conversation. But until you've internalized that script, I'm gonna stick you to tell you to stick to that because that's gonna be helping you to get to the faster conversion and help hop over your learning curve a little bit. Uh, leaving something at the door with the owner that tells everything that you do, right? That's a mistake that people do. They leave a full pre-listing package at the door there, right? Why am I going to call you now? No reason to call you. Best practice, in my opinion, is take your business card, a neon-colored sticky note, put that neon-colored sticky note on your card, say, sorry, I missed you. Please call me. It'll smiley face. And then I take blue painter's tape, and I take that to their door. Don't put it in the, the weather stripping. People get mad, especially high-end homes. They will call you up and tell you a piece of their mind. Um, never do that again. <laughs> Learn my lesson the hard way. I got chewed out really fast. I could even say I'm sorry. And <laughs> oh, they've got her, her sticky notes over here and her blue painter's tape. Yeah. They do make a thinner version if you need. Um, um, they, these things here, they work terribly and they're perfect use for the tape. You can get these at the dollar store for a dollar. You'll get like, uh, I think, 10 or 15 of these. Mm -hmm. They don't stick real well. But we got taters takes too. Okay, so if you want to save a few bucks, I am participating. I'm just sitting here, so I don't think people say. 
Oh, you're fine. Well, thank you. I know you can hear me there because I'm pretty loud. <laughs> um, so you guys, again, leave a little mystery. Give a reason to call you. I kind of got where even in my career, I, I kind of I go into things, I get them out of things, I go into things, I come out of things, I get away from basics, I get creative, I get away from the basics, and we all do it, even me. Um, and uh, I was doing that for a while where I had these postcards, you know, hey, you're, you're honking off the market, let's get you back on target. You know, showed a little red target with some arrows, you know, I gave a couple bullet points about us and whatnot, my team. And uh, and I was I noticed that I was dropping off and doing the same thing that I felt like I was always doing, but my conversion was dropping off. I wasn't getting as many calls. And Scott's like, well, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? That's not what I taught you. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I'm like, no, I taught you to be a business card. And I'm uh, sorry if I missed you. Please call me. Give them a reason to call you. Tease them a little bit. Oh, maybe they have a buyer from my Maybe they drove by and they have a buyer from my house. Right? They don't know. So I went back to the basics of what I was taught. And sure enough, Instantly, that very next time I went out, dropped into business cards, I probably got three more phone calls, right? Because I did it back to the basics of a simple way. Um, do, 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 do. All right, common agent mistakes when door knocking. Um, not participating, uh, not, partic not practicing it long enough to obtain the skill to get the results, right? We had a great example of uh, Julia, who I love for being such a great sport that day, <laughs> regarding the four cell biometer. She did a couple of them, she's like, eh, this doesn't work, and she gave up. She quit doing it. She literally, she's like, forget this, right? Then she realized real quickly that's an important part of her business and that she came back to class. It was a nice little kick in the butt that she needed. And same thing with um, Miss Tammy here, too. So Tammy, just to share with you guys real quick. Hey, come on in. Uh, Tammy, after after the four syllable of her class, share with them your, your experience. What did um, you do? I called... I think six or seven four syllable owners and set three appointments. You guys, seven calls and book three appointments. Let's give Tammy a little round of applause. Uh, Can you guys tell us what your first time calling? You're only call doing? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> right? So, so this was this was her opportunity to step out of her comfort zone and make business happen and look at what happened. Right? Even if you suck. You're gonna get something, and the more you do it, you the more experience you build, the more your confidence builds. You're like, oh shit, this the first time you get like, oh shit, this works. <gasps> oh my gosh, why have I been doing this? And now I know I need to do it more. So here's the thing, guys. If you guys are out there doing it, you kind of what I call dabbling in it, and you're not getting the results you want. Well, that's because you're dabbling in it. You need to take. We know, prove it. It is proven, statistically proven over the years. The people have researched this. Doing these things work. It is a huge, the most successful people, the top 20% in our industry who are literally million dollar agents. This is what they focus on is expired listings for sale by owners. And they do that through uh, phone calling and door knocking. Those are the two major things that they're doing that drive a majority of their business, like 80% of their business, right? So these things do work. So if you're doing it, you're not getting the results you want. That means you need to do more of it. More. Absolutely. And of course, the more you do, just think about those 100 people. Think about how you're going to sound with the first person, how you're going to sound with the 99th person, right? You're tired of getting kicked and told no and that door shutting, and now your stubbornness is kicking, and you're like, damn it, I'm going to, someone's going to freaking talk to me, right? I'm going to figure this shit out. Someone's going to talk to me, and I'm going to close the deal because I know this works. This is what the successful people in my industry do. It works. I just need to get my butt and do it more. I need to practice more so I can develop my skill, develop my habits, develop my, uh, my conversion. All right. All right, so door knocking facts. So those that 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 practice uh, and perfect the tech of I can't read today. I haven't finished my coffee. Okay, so those who practice and perfect the technique of door knocking directly to leads, uh, those already determined that they need the service we provide, expired listings, um, that they have a, a larger ROI. Agents that uh, perfect this prospecting method constantly get new listings easily. Right, because now they've done it a few times. They've got a rhythm. They've built their confidence. Right. What's the biggest thing that sells people when you when you go there and you sit down with them? Yeah. Your confidence, your energy. Your energy comes from your confidence. Right. I'm excited about this. I'm so excited that I'm going to be able to help you. I know you've been through this frustration. I'm so sorry you had that experience. But listen, I'm really excited to be here today because you know what your situation. I've I've sat through many of these and I'm confident. I can get you guys back on track. I can get you to this place that you want to be for this reason in this time frame. Okay, so let, let's get it done. Here's where we need to price the home. Here's our marketing that we're going to put behind it to make it happen. Sign here and put me to work for you. Okay. 
that simple. And you guys will get to that level the more you do it, the better you practice. All right, so phone calling. Yay. Uh, so phone calling, zero financial investment, right? It doesn't cost you anything. We actually provide you with a lot of the phone numbers. We have that cold program that you guys can use. Um, and you're going to be able to communicate to more expired than less time. So where I love the door to door face to face, we don't always have, you know, the time for that based on what's going on. Let's say we have a busy day with appointments, right? So we don't have time to necessarily prospect door knocking that day, but we have an hour. We have an hour in between things. What can we be doing? Picking up the phone. My goal, you guys should have goals, full sheets, right? Every day I'm going to talk to at least 10 expired listings. I want to talk to 10 for sale by owners. I want to talk to five unknown people. Right? I think that's in your yep. thing here somewhere. Okay, hold that up for me. Okay, so it looks like this. So you guys chose about your four cell binary to expire the scene. Kind of gives you a check sheet that you can go off of in there, right? Make copies of this. Right? Use this every single week. This should be your goal sheet, right? Put a highlighter. You know, what I used to do um, way back in the day is, uh, like, for example, when my wedding was coming up, right, I would take a piece of paper, I would fold it like a 10 on my desk, and I would write the word wedding in big letters. Every time I talked to a prospect, I'd cross out a letter, right? That was my motivation because I wanted to pay for that wedding cash, which I did. Um, didn't go into debt over getting married, <laughs> um, but that was my motivation. So I had something that motivated me in this. This is kind of the same thing for you is I want to talk to this many people. Highlight and put a heart, a star at that number that you want to hit every single week. Draw little lines in between. So, so if I want to hit um, 100 doors this week, I need 20 a day. So I'm going to put a line at 20 and we're right Monday. Put a line at 40, right Tuesday. All right, I'm going to put all that together. Set yourself up for success, okay? Um, also, with telephone calling, uh, it's extremely effective if you practice the scripts. An objection healer is best used in communicating by telephone. So, again, practice your script, practice your script, practice your script. A uh, common mistake that agents make as well is not using and following the scripts of objection healers. So, again, until you've internalized that, psychologized that, that is a word um, in my vocabulary, and, um, and, and, and then you're going to sound more natural with it. Okay? So, you just got to keep, keep doing it. You have your accountability buddies. You should be texting your accountability buddies at least every other day. Hey, how are you doing this week with script practice? Hey, do you want to schedule a day and time that we can call? Like how you and Pam do, right? Mm -hmm. Things like that. That's going to give her the best practices, like I said, that real life interaction uh, role play versus just doing the script practice. Postcards and letters, we know these suck. You're only going to get 3 to 4% impact. Where and again, y'all not complete. I'm going to hate on it completely. Okay, there is a time and a place for the, for the postcard. Like you just got a listing under contract or sold, right? That's an opportune moment to do specific targeted postcards for specifically that neighborhood. Hey, or at least a couple blocks around it. Hey, I'm sure you've saw, seen that uh, beautiful floor electric sign in your neighbor's yard. If you notice now there's a sold sign underneath of it. Now because of our phenomenal marketing that we've been doing with this property, we have a number of buyers and people that are contacting us that are interested in this specific neighborhood or area. Listen, have you thought about buying or selling a home? I might be able to connect you with someone today and help save you thousands of dollars, right? Because then I'm going to double in that. I'm going to negotiate a better commission, right? So I'm going to save them thousands of dollars because now I don't have to list their property. I'm just going to connect them with the buyer, but I'm going to charge them for their end too, right? And then hopefully I'm going to triple end it by now helping them sell that property because now they're going to be buying this one or vice versa. So lots of good stuff. All right, so yes, there's a time and place for this. Also, if you're just introducing yourself into a farm area, right? I know actually our farm areas are huge, like 3,000 freaking houses, right? Start small. Pick a quarter, a quadrant, whatever, a section, phase one, whatever it is that you want to focus on. And in my opinion, you're best to do a smaller area that you can afford a, a, a nice budget on. Do a smaller area and do it more often, okay? The key to a lot of this stuff is consistency. If you go to a neighborhood and you send out a postcard once a year, what kind of impact do you think that's going to have? None. They got to see you regularly. So better to pick a smaller area and do it once a month, let's say, and do it consistently. The first of every month, I'm going to send out some sort of informational postcard about the area, list the sold stats. Hey, are you thinking about buying or selling a home? I offer free complimentary consultations. Hey, guess what, Saddlebrook? 
I'm now taking, I just had a number of closings and now I'm taking on new clients. You could be next, right? Something along those lines to build that. So time and a place for it. Best to do a smaller focus area where you can do it more often until you start generating some income, get some more closings, and then start branching those areas out or pick up another farm area too that you'd be interested in. Uh, okay. Um, other than expires, what kind of leads can we identify with with the three methods of communication generating for uh, listings? So besides expired, how else can we use the same method that we're doing? Uh, for sale by owner? Yeah, I know. Sorry. Okay. No, oh. <laughs> when, uh, with, the, with things, of, like when I upload the slides into here, it takes away the animation. So normally I hit the space bar and then the answer would show up. So it's kind of cheating a little bit. But yeah, so we take these exact same methods and we apply them towards a for sale by owner. So you guys are taking your skill and you're doubling the opportunity with it. So while, while you're out, and your um, door knocking is expired. I'm in a neighborhood. I'm targeting expired. I'm going to expire listing. While I pull in a neighborhood, I see a for sale by side. What am I going to do? I'm not going to talk about it. Absolutely. You're there. Get her done. Um, <laughs> so maximize every opportunity. So now, um, expired listing versus for sale by owner. What's the fundamental difference? We already kind of know this. We covered this a lot. So the expired listing is willing to pay a commission. We don't have to battle them for that. They know our worth. Right? They're willing to pay it. We don't have this one last battle that we have. Our, our difference is that we have to help them overcome and empathize with their situation, let them vent, put on our therapy hat, and then we need to get them past it. Okay, I'm sorry you had this experience. I'm sorry this happened, but this is where we are now today. You guys had a goal. I want to help get you there. Here's how we're going to do it. Okay? Uh, the force of does not want to pay a commission, and they think they can do everything themselves, right? <clears throat> and that's why. Uh, like 85, 95% of for sale by owners will list with a professional. That's why it's a relationship building. You gotta wait till they're at that point, that frustration point. So you gotta keep brushing their hair, tell them they're pretty until they reach that point. Uh, we were just making phone calls during our power prospecting on Saturday, and one of them, I think, uh, Alona spoke to, and they're like, "Oh, we just listed with a realtor." And one of my talked to too. We just listed with a realtor. Oh, I'm so sorry you have an opportunity to meet you first. Did you actually sign that contract yet? Yeah, we already signed it, turned it in, they're coming over later today to do photos. Man, right? Well, instead of taking, you need to take that frustration and do that in a positive light. That's another great success story of how a professional converted, I should have called them a week earlier, right? Or kept calling them, I hit them at the right time, okay? Or been the first to, so even if they say we're just in the beginning of the process, we just put the home on like a week ago. We're feeling it out, seeing how it's going. Our motivation level isn't that high yet. That's okay. Don't like forget, don't like push this one to the side too much because now you're the first one to get in there, meet them, preview the home, and start that relationship. Then you're going to be the one that continues to follow up with them through the process. Yes, it takes a little bit longer, but generally you're going to be able to build a lot more loyalty um, than someone coming in about halfway through the point. Okay, so what are some of the challenges we need to overcome? When hiring, um, when uh, being hired by an expired seller, is that not all real estate agents are the same, right? We're Florida luxury realty. You guys, we're different. We're better than. Okay, we do things differently. We're going to be honest with them. Uh, we have our phenomenal 18-point marketing plan, which, by the way, Scott has redone again, and it is even better. Um, it makes a lot more sense the way that it flows. So you're double hitting information for the most part, um, but it's great. And again, that Scott, he's always taking things and making them better and you know, giving you guys awesome stuff. Um, and connecting with them and creating comfort and trust. You guys, what are the three things that are going to get people to give you business? Get them to know you, love you, and trust you. Absolutely. Okay. So you need to connect with them and create that comfort, create that trust with them. Let them know that you're the professional they need to hire. Um, Okay, other common mistakes is that, again, people don't practice and learn scripts and objections. What's our theme of the day today? Practice, practice scripts practice, and practice. objections. Absolutely. Perfect your skill, hone your craft. Um, they don't accept no, or they accept a no or rejection too quickly. Right? You guys, it's all about conversation. Asking questions or giving you objections. Try to help them overcome that objection and ask them another question. Right? And take them in another direction. The longer you imagine, so so to people, until they get to know us, we're salespeople, right? Okay. So we're salespeople. They have this wall, this little brick wall. 
And just imagine every 30 seconds you're sitting there talking to them, you push over a little brick. You push them over a little brick. Push and how, how do you get there talking to them longer? You just keep asking questions. The longer you're there with them, the more of the comfort level they're having with you. That wall is coming down. So think of that. You're going there to meet someone, um, ask some questions, how you can help solve their, identify their problems, help be a solution for their problems, and how you can help them, again, reignite their motivation, get them to the place they want to be in the time frame that they're looking for. Um, and they are constantly follow up, right? Fortune is in the follow up. Follow up, absolutely. If you're not going to follow up, don't waste your time, guys. Can't say this enough. Because that takes time, energy, gas. You could have been doing something else. Right? If you're not willing to follow up with these people, don't do it. Find something else to do. Go do an event. Even if you do an event, everything you do, you have to follow up on. So if you're not going to follow up and you, you're you insistent on not getting better at follow up, then maybe you should find something else besides real estate. Because this is a people business and you've got to stay in communication. Communication is key. Um, where do I find expired listings? So again, we do have the MLS database. Right, that's where we go in and search expired listings, go to a certain area, certain price point, research those, make sure that they are not uh, relisted. Uh, there's the hot sheets on notification. So a lot of people know you can do this, but let's say there's a couple properties you're kind of eyeing, right? You're like, oh man, or your farm area, right? And um, you're like, man, I really want to stay on top of this. So let's say for your farm area, for example, you can go into your farm area and tell it just how you do auto emails for clients. You can set it up so that it emails you expired listings every day or whatever listings pop up at that time automatically so like oh man that one popped out especially too when i am outdoor knocking they're like oh we just hired another agent or whatever they didn't choose you they choose someone else i do an auto email based on that address and i tell it i check all the statuses and i'm like if anything changes with this i want to be notified so I'll see if the property is that's listed that I have my eye on, that I feel I have a good follow-up with. They just, for some reason, the other person told them something or they cut their commission to bottom dollar or whatever it was that they went with this other person. And I'm going to watch that. And I'm always going to ask permission to follow up. You always end an appointment with another appointment. I, even if they're there, they're relisted. I would call and follow up with them like I'm scheduled to. And be like, oh, you relisted? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Or blah, 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 you know, whatever the conversation is. And they're like, wait, do you mind if I follow up with you? So in case they can't get the job done, you know, you can sit down and talk to me again. Because as you see, I was honest with you about And normally what it is is somebody tells them some inflated price. Oh, yeah, we can get you desk for the house. Fine with me. And their goal is to beat them up the whole time, right? So I'm going to put them in my, my uh, email thing. I'm going to put them in there so that when they expire, if they withdraw, I'm calling them immediately that day. Hey, remember me, the agent that was honest with you? about getting your home sold. I know this other guy sold you a pipe dream and this is when it didn't work out. So listen, I'd love an opportunity to sit down with you again and let, let's get this property sold. Right? Do you think your odds greatly increase when you call that person after they expire again? Absolutely. Scott was persistent about that. Oh my gosh, every single appointment that he went to, he had it on an auto thing and he would call them back. Sometimes he would go through two or three other agents because they just wanted to hear what people wanted to tell them. Yeah, sure, especially because we specialize in waterfront properties. There's a huge price issue with the sellers. And um, and so he would just stay on them. Sometimes we'd take them two or three agents later and be like, okay, are you finally ready to listen to me, the one that was honest with you? I'm like, all right, Scott, let's get this done. Right? And it pays. Persistence pays. Follow up pays. Where do I find expired listings? Again, there's the hot sheet notifications that you can set yourself up with through the MLS. Uh, you should verify the listings have not already been actively listed again prior to contacting the owner, of course. Uh, fresh, hot, expired listings are notable for being immediately solicited by several competing uh, realtors and immediately a couple of days afterwards, or uh, during a couple of days after they have expired. So again, when we're, when we go out that day, we're going to put our list together. They kind of went over that with you that one Saturday. I'm going to be making a video of that too as well so you guys can go back and watch it about how to do, um, and call it Sharice's method of, finding the highest conversion and main focused expired. So this is going to be ones where we're going to take out all the uh, vacant properties. We're going to take out all the agent owner properties. We're going to go through and specifically search homes where it is the individual owner who is in the property that we're going to have the best chance of um, communicating with. So if we're knocking on 10 doors, we have at least a 50% chance higher of talking to somebody versus if we just randomly selected all these expired listings. Okay. 
Um, search history, uh, an effective method of prospecting is to research back 30, 60, 90 days. Again, that's kind of my area of, of expertise. I love the older ones. They're not hit as hard. They're the people that needed to breathe. They've had that opportunity to breathe. Now I'm going to reignite them with their motivation. Uh, you also have uh, no or far less competition soliciting those listings, and you do have a higher possibility that circumstances exist that the prospect is no longer um, interested in selling. So before where they weren't interested in selling because they're about experience, now you can reignite that and help them get over that. Um, preview active listings likely to expire, right? So we have a days on market counter. Typical listings are about 180 days. So sometimes if I see them right around 175-ish day, I might go and preview those properties, especially in my farm area, right? When I call and I schedule those appointments, I let them know, hey, it's just me. I'm just going to be previewing the property. I don't want to be inconvenient to the owner. If the owner wants to stay there, that's fine, right? Because as soon as they go there and knock on the door, they answer, what am I doing? Handing them my business card. Now, I can't solicit them. I can't say, hey, how's it going? Why don't you list with me? Nope. But what happens is now they know, generally the owners, not always, but sometimes the owners know that their listing is about to expire, right? And so now they're thinking, hmm, who do I want to talk to, right? This guy's not getting the job done. And here they had a chance to meet me, we had great conversation. I, I'm spitting out numbers about the area, showing that I'm a local expert. I leave them my card. And then also I'm going to be first to knock on that door when it does actually expire if they have not called me beforehand. Okay, so you got to be careful with that. Again, while they're in a listing contract, you cannot solicit them. You cannot say anything about business. But if they bring business to you and they start asking you questions, that's a whole other story. Okay, but again, it's kind of that put yourself in front of opportunity. Okay. And then, of course, when you show up after it expires, you're like, hey, remember me? Can you go back there? I'm just curious. So if you go to preview the property, and you said you hand them a business card. Yeah, hey, I'm sure he's a full of tree mm -hmm. So they know who you are. Right. And you're coming into their home. Okay. Yeah, I have an appointment. Here's my business card. And most of them will ask you for a business card. Make sure you are who you say you are. Okay. You know, whatever it is. So, but that's just natural for me always. Introduce myself and hand them a card. Hey, I'm sure he's full of tree realty. Here you go. But don't you usually set that up through the, the agent? Mm-hmm. I'm going to preview the property. Okay. It, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to preview the property. Um, you know, this is kind of my farm area. I, I work a lot. I'm going to come and preview the property. And uh, I know it's just me. I don't have a client. So I tell them if the owner wants to stay home, I don't want to disturb their life. They can keep doing what they're doing. I'll just be in and out. Okay. And I do. I truly go there. I preview the property. I'm taking some notes on my MLS sheet. As soon as I get to the door, I hand them my card. Hey, I'm sure he's split off your realty. I had a four o'clock appointment today. Is this a good time? I'll be in and out of your hair. That works. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm walking through the house, I'm there talking to you, asking you questions, whatever might come about. Right. And if anything, even if I just meet them, uh, you know, I tour the property, I leave five days later, I'm there when it expires. Hey, I know you guys. I figured out the other day. How's it going? Mm -hmm. Sorry, your house didn't sell. You know, I was trying to help you out. That's so why I was previewing it to see if I knew any buyers. Um, but listen, you know, I specialize in homes like yours that didn't sell the first time. We have 18 years of experience in the business, five office locations, 250 agents strong. Uh, listen, give me 15 to 20 minutes so I can tell you, you know, why so many homeowners choose me over the average agent. Let, let's get you back on track. By the way, if the home had sold, where are we planning on living to? Why is that important to you? How soon did you want to be there? Great. So, Mr. Seller, when we sit down, I'm going, to, I'm going to be able to put you on a game plan. I'm going to be able to put you on track to get you to this place for this reason, that time frame, and, and get this going for you. Okay. Um, so, talk about the obstacles. So, of course, sometimes we can't find their phone numbers. We have IMAP. We have the whole Realty Resource Program. We do have the Red X. We can try to look stuff up in. Home is vacant with my Sharice's method. Of uh, searching expires, we actually remove all these vacant properties through viewing the photos and also the uh, MLS comment status without being vacant. The home is gated. We're fearless of gates, right, guys? We show up, we act as if. We go straight up to the gate guard with our, our sheet and our business card. Here, I'm a realtor. I'm here to see this house. Okay, there you go. Get on your way. Right? Act as if. Um, also, choose some of them. They don't have a gate guard, just a punch code. You just kind of hang out. <laughs> kind of like the long guys, you know, we wait for somebody to go in and we start through real quick, right? Whatever, just act as if, just go in there, it's just as natural. 
Um, or no one's home. Again, that's why we're going to leave the business card with a bright colored sticky note. Yes, I mean, most people kind of go through the garage, right? But that's why, again, I, I push the, the bright colored sticky note on your card so that they will see it will catch their attention as they're going in so they know they need to check the front door and see that. Um, and again, persistence. Keep going back, especially if it's a property or in a community that you really want. Keep putting that back in your list the next time you go out. Write down the day and time that you were there so you can kind of catch, okay, during the day, during the week, they're definitely not home. They probably work. So I'm going to come out on one of my evening appointments or come out on my Saturday appointment. Um, find seller contact information. So again, we have the Cole Realty Resource Program. That we, you guys, you don't even have to come into the office to do that. You can be at home remotely and you just make an appointment with Elise saying, hey, about one o'clock. Can we do any desk? Can you log me in? Right? That's Christine does it almost every single day. And she's in there searching phone numbers and stuff. Um, there's the white pages. If it's even set up in a smart app. Spokey is the one that you pay for. Like I said, Leanne does that. You can ask her for feedback on how she likes that. Um, and then of course, social media. All right? These are spy technologies, right? Social media, look these people up. Get an idea. Um, one of them that Monir is talking to now is like a $600,000 $800,000 expired over in Tampa Palms. And I knew another agent that was going for that listing about six months ago when it had expired. And first thing she did was she Googled him and she looked him up on, on social media, saw that they had all these pictures talking about the new $1.2 million house that they had just bought. So she quickly identified, oh, well, I don't need to be banging on this door. I need to be banging on that door. Personally wrote them a letter. Now these people are, they're doctors, anesthesiologists, this six hundred thousand dollar home that's just sitting there is it's nothing. It's it's a tissue on the floor, right? It's nothing to them, right? They don't. It doesn't cost them anything. They're not motivated at all. But Monier, through his luck, got him, talked to him, landed the appointment, and now they're continuing to follow up with him. Okay. So again, persistence absolutely pays. Um, so other ways to find their thing is to um, the same resources for uh, for the contact info. Um, also, you can look through County Property Appraiser's Office. So this is another method if you want to go out and specifically target the ones that did come up as vacant. And you want to go through and in the MLS, you can click on the tax ID number. It's a blue hyperlink. And a lot of times if they have changed their address already, we'll say now they have a different mailing address, right? So now you can have a day of targeted expires that half of the people, like there's already a limited amount of people even going after expires to start with. And then you eliminate your competition by probably 75%, right? Of the only maybe 25%, if that, that are gonna take that next step and actually go to where these people live and try to convert them. It's another great thing. You can also ask the neighbors. Do you ever see the neighbors up? Always walk up and talk to them. Neighbors are always nosy. They want to know what's going on. And here's the great thing too, is that neighbors will usually tell you everything about the neighborhood, about that house, about the people that used to live there before them, right? So this is great ammunition that you have for when you do make contact. Like, yeah, I talked to your neighbor, Betty, blah, blah, blah. Heard you guys just had a baby. Congratulations about your next home. I'm so happy for you guys. Listen, I'm sure having the baby, I know you don't have much time to deal with this other property. Listen, let me get the job done for you, okay? Be <laughs> good detectives. So we can already talk about this in uh, it's a gated community. You can prospect them by telephone. You can just slide on in the gate or go to the gate card. Um, and you can always send out a targeted letter if that's something you're interested in, if it's a focus area. Um, what to do if no one's at the property? We talked about leaving your car, requesting them to call you back. Hey, sorry, I missed you. Please give me a call, smiley face. Uh, prospect them by telephone or just keep coming back at alternate times. Uh, assume they still want to sell, so assume, act as if, that's how you need to move forward with everything. Like, hey, were you helping to go through that rigmarole again? You know, I know what a nightmare it was keeping your house clean and taking the dog and the kids out and blah, 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 but would you want to do that again? No. Hey, I know you want to get the home sold. I'm confident I can do it for you. Let me help you get to this place for that reason, that time frame. Um, so assume they still want to sell and therefore convince them to interview you for the job of selling your home immediately. Uh, and get it back active on the market. Here's what typically happens when you knock on the expired listing. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, I'm Sharice, Florida Electric Realty. How are you today? Great. Listen, um, I noticed your home came off the market recently. What? What's going on? Yeah, your home, it's, it's no longer being exposed to the thousands of buyers that are out there right now. You didn't know that? Oh, it sounds to me like your agent didn't have good communication with you. Um, you see, because the MLS, 
they told your agent two <clears throat> weeks ago and they never called you wow your communication is key that is something i pride my business on listen we help people like you every day people whose homes didn't sell the first time around we've been around for 18 years you know we have a great reputation in the community i'd love to sit down with you for 15 to 20 minutes and show you why so many people choose us to get their home sold uh, quickly and for top dollar so is tuesday a good day for you or, or is saturday better that's all i want to do guys it's a conversation and you see how naturally i just say these things because i've internalized them done it enough freaking times you guys will get there too i promise okay so again once you do speak with the owner afterwards kind of your action plan which is built in there too is that you want to send them a handwritten thank you card you guys nobody does that the florida luxury were better then um, so you guys need to do that little above and beyond thing. Um, and even if I'm just like, I love yard sales. I love meeting people and finding awesome treasures. And, and 50% of the people out there with a yard sale have can at least considered, have a thought in their back of their head of selling their home, making a move, whether it's a pipe dream or not. It's something that motivated them. Oh man, if we did want to move, the first thing we need to do is get rid of all this, get rid of all this clutter, right? So let's have a yard sale. Let's clean up the house a little bit. Okay. And even if I meet someone who says, oh, I've, I, I built this house, I'll buy in this house. This is, I'm not going anywhere. No problem, I appreciate that. And that's why people love your community so much. Why there's such a demand for it, because it is such a great community here. Um, listen, you know, let me just leave it to you in my car. So if anyone you know, friends, family, even your neighbors, talking about making a move, buying or selling a home, I'd love to help them out. And then I, without looking too creepy, I get back to my car, write down the address, any notes that I can think of from our conversation. They had a little dog squeaker, you know, whatever it is, you know, you think about those. Then we're going to handwrite them a letter and say, thank you so much for talking, taking time to speak with me at your, at your yard sale. Um, I hope you had huge success and you didn't have much you had to put away. Um, your little dog squeaker is so stinking cute. Let me just tell you, he's adorable. Um, and, you know, if you guys do need anything in the future, again, please, please keep me in mind. I dropped two more of my business cards in there. Maybe a $5 Starbucks card. You know, something like that if I feel like I made great before. And I've had those people come back to me, sometimes a year later. Hey, remember me? Um, we met at the community yard sale. Listen, my son is coming down from Michigan. Can you help him find a house? Absolutely. Yes, I can. And I'll tell you, here's the, the thing with family, too, is that you get one person down here, then eventually they're all going to come. So, and I make that joke to them about, okay, you're, you're going to start, you're going to start the flow. I'm going to sell you a house and you're going to convince everybody else that they need to come to Florida and you're going to call me, right? But I keep telling you, you build your pipeline, your business will feed itself. Okay. Um, hey, my thank you cards. Add them to my leads, your database system in the back office. Use your Google Calendar. Use your repeat button to follow up with them periodically based on their motivation. When is the best time to call expired listings? Typically between like 9.30 and noon. Isn't bad for during the day if that's when you have time. And then, of course, in the evenings after 5.30. When I'm not specifically door knocking, um, I'm a fan of that about the 3.30 hour about when most people are, are getting off of work, they get off early, pick up their kids from school, whatever it is. From about 3.30, and then of course, my notice on my contacts keep increasing uh, the closer I get to about 5, 5.30 and on from there. Because now more people are home and making more contacts. Sometimes depending on the area that I'm in, um, even if it's like later in the evening and I'm done with my list and it's still early, I go back to the beginning of my list. The ones that are working backwards, the ones that I did not get a hold of, I will go back to because now I have a greater chance of them coming out and answering the door. So but basically, this is gonna be great key times if you're putting it on your calendar to focus on those things. But again, you guys, if you end up having an hour in the middle of the day, pick up the phone, just do it, get it done. And you might be pleasantly surprised, right? You make five phone, make seven phone calls by Tammy here and book three appointments, right? Just, you, you just the more, the more times you play, <coughs> the better the odds of winning, right? What about leaving messages? And if you call and no one answers, mm -hmm. and you uh, leave your message. So, so here's what I always tell you guys. If I'm calling and leaving messages, I want to sound like a curious consumer. I want to be like, hey, I'm the 50th realtor that's called you today, but you should call me back, not the other guys. Right? No. I'm going to call and I'm going to act like a curious consumer on my voicemail. So, hi, um, I was calling about the home on Main Street. Had a couple quick questions. If you could please call me back, my number is blah, 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 right? So then they're going to call you, 
It's like, oh, hi, you call me, and they're excited. They think like you might be a buyer or who knows what. They don't, they're, they're, they don't have no clue at this point. You, you spark their curiosity. They want to call you back to know more. The less is more. Um, so then they call you, oh, hey, you called about my house on Main Street. Oh, hi, yes, I'm sorry, what was your name again? You know, they didn't say it. Hey, I was, yeah, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Oh, my name's Bill. Hey, Bill, this is Sharice with Florida Luxury Realty. How are you today? Great. Listen, I saw your home came off the market recently. I'm confident I can help you get it sold. I was just curious. Are you still interested in selling it? Da, 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 right? Just go straight into your script. But I need to get them to call me back first. I need to create that opportunity. So I'm going to leave that mystery. I'm going to call. And you always do need to identify who you are and that you're a professional. But that's when they call me back, when we're in a conversation. But I need to get them to call me back first. I'm not going to call and say, hey, I don't have 50 realtor that's called you. You know, well, please give me a call back. Please, 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 please. No, I'm just going to be sound like a curious consumer. I need to have curiosity in my voice. I don't, I don't try to sound like a professional. Hey, this is Cherise. I saw your home on Zillow, and I was wondering if you're still interested in selling it. Please give me a call back at blah, 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 blah. Again, that number is blah, 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 blah. No, I'm going to sound like a curious, hey, I was, I was just uh, online, and, and, you know, I saw your home on Main Street. And I'm going to say the house number. I just say on Main Street. Um, I had a couple more questions, so if you could call me back, I'd appreciate it. My number is blah, 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 blah. Right? Short, sweet, and simple. And you just need to get them to call you back because now you've created that opportunity. Now you have them on the phone. Now you go in and do your job to kill the appointment. Okay, what are the best days for prospecting expired listings? You guys, you have the most amount of expired listings are going to be like the first day of the month, the last day of the month, and then, of course, on Saturdays. So Saturday is your best day for prospecting all the time. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Saturday is the best day for prospecting. You can take four days off during the week and do hardcore focused prospecting on a Saturday and pick up just as much business. Now, should you do both of them and double your odds? Absolutely. Okay. But Saturday should be a primary main day focus for prospecting. Um, and the first of the month, too. So, generally, when listing agreements expire, a lot of times they expire on the last day of the month or the first day of the month, right? So, to give you an idea, we use the Red X program here, right? Um, we come in every Saturday and I do a fresh sweep of all the leads from that week, and that's when I give out when we're calling. Last time when we did this three weeks ago, it was the beginning of the month. And I had, when I get on average a week, about 100, 100 ish, 150 leads that I get on Saturday to become an Empower Prospect. When I did it on that Saturday after the first of the month, there was 315 leads. Three times the amount for that one week. So it's just for that one week, not even the whole month, that one week was 315 leads that we come in on Saturday and we call. Okay? All right. So opportune times, you guys. Learn the times that you need to focus the most. Um, we need to be doing a little bit of everything, but these are the key times you guys really want to hit on that. Have that on your calendar. All right, so how soon do you want to make the appointment? Make the appointment before after setting it? ASAP, <laughs> <laughs> right away. Hit them while they're hot, while this is fresh in their mind and they're motivated. Try not to make an appointment for two weeks later because what happens? Life, right? They lost their motivation. Something happened. Hey, I don't even bother with this now. No, great. I can be there at 5 o'clock tonight, 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, right? Whatever it is. Make it happen as soon as possible. Uh, success starts with prospecting and mastering the skill of prospecting expired. So, again, practice, practice, practice. Uh, <laughs> right? Because he's frustrated. He's on the con side because he hasn't been practicing. He hasn't found his skill, right? So, the more you do it, the better you get always. Um, how to become confident, fearless, and improve prospecting to lead ratios. Again, practice, practice, practice scripts and objections, uh, handling and presentation delivery. Uh, so again, it's not just your script here, it's also your listing presentation, right? It's because you, you're you honing your craft and your script to get the appointment. Now you got the appointment, you're like, oh my God, what do I do now, right? <laughs> so we need to also at the same time, as a part of your practicing, also be uh, throwing in roles for the practicing. And you guys don't even have to have somebody there. We all have cameras. They're built into our phone. They're built into our laptops, right? Record yourself. Watch yourself. Learn about the little ticks that you have. Learn when someone, when you're going over an objection, where do you say um the most, right? One, cut out the um. Two, you're saying um because you're not confident about your answer. You need time to think. So guess what? If you notice you're saying um at a certain objection point, you would better figure out new, new handlers for that objection, right? Get better at it. Methods to practice, of course, read them so quietly and out loud. I would cross that quietly. It needs to be out loud. Because when you're practicing these scripts, 
Um, say them out loud over and over and over again. Don't worry about punctuality or tonality or pauses. Just keep saying them over and over and over again until you internalize them to where you can flip the page over and say it without looking at it. Okay, that's the goal is to internalize them so that when you are in a conversation, you're speaking more naturally because you already know the answer. And you can roll out with it in a natural conversation style. It's when you don't know what answer to say, you're like, uh, 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 and you're like, oh, you're totally get thrown off. Voice record and listen to the playback and role play with another partner. That is going to be your ultimate, ultimate thing to do. Because again, it's going to get you to think quickly on your feet when you're actually practicing like real life. Common myths about scripts, they will sound fake or like a robot, that you're acting, pretending, and not being honest with prospects. And that's just plain stupid. It's not for me, right? That's false. We know that, right? We know the more we practice, the better we get, the more natural we will sound. It is awkward at first. Yes, of course. Everything is. When you rode a bike, did you ride that perfectly with no hands the first time? Were you awkward and like this and fell over 10 times, right? Of course, we all are. And so we get the, the, the knack of it. So we get doing it naturally. Um, when you're practicing, you need to practice them until you learn them, memorize them, and internalize them. Uh, then you'll sound natural when speaking, and the consumer has already agreed to obtain real estate services through the use of scripts. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I skipped that. Okay. More facts about scripts. So, again, a lot of people don't realize that so many industries utilize scripts, right? And how, do, how do you teach somebody and present to them all the information that they need to learn? It's all scripted. You know, when you watch like Kevin Ward and his listing presentations, or the listing presentation with that Diaz lady that's in the back office, if you guys actually notice, it's a script. It's the same thing over and over and over again. So um, there's scripts they're using in just about like every single industry, uh, even the US government. So military recruiters are required to practice, learn, and use scripts for influencing the value of the young adults for uh, joining the Army, Air Force, Coast Guard, or Marines, right? So scripts have always been the best tools for influencing consumers to purchase your product and service. And scripts help put things in like a flow for you, right? I say this, and then I say that, and then I say this, and I say that, right? So you're not just all over the place like a hot mess, right? It keeps you organized. You understand the information you need to present to them in order to convert them and get the business. And this just puts it in a nice, laid out, organized method for you. Uh, okay. Get started. Okay, so you guys, again, discipline. It's the hardest thing. This is why most of us are, you know, that aren't skinny, that uh, because self. Self-discipline is hard. Telling yourselves no, right? Oh, I should eat those rice cakes instead of that donut. <laughs> you know, oh, I need to go to the gym instead of sleeping in, which I am guilty of this morning. Um, so yes, we know these things. It's a self-discipline. Okay, that's the hardest thing as humans for us to do. But you gotta understand that when I discipline myself and I do these things, great things are gonna come from that. So you need to Focus on the, the outcome, the objective, the end result, right? That I'm going to go through this pain, hop on this treadmill for a half hour, twice a week to get the butt that I want, right? End result, end result. Um, how should I discipline myself? Restrict yourself from an item or activity that you, that you need or enjoy until you have committed to practicing your scripts and performing, right? So I love watching my Dr. Philip 5, right? My, my Mori at 4, okay? But no, I know that should be time that I should be prospecting. So I'm not going to watch those shows. I'm going to dedicate myself to prospecting. Then at the end, you need to reward yourself, right? So I went all week, and I did not watch my Phil. I did not watch my Maury. I prospected. I now have six appointments for next week. Ha, oh, that alone in itself is a reward. But now what I'm going to do on Saturday is I'm going to veg out. I'm going to Netflix. And I'm going to watch all Lori that I missed all week, right? I'm going to put them up in the TV and I'm going to veg out and I'm going to watch them all, right? So discipline and reward. Kind of like even when you're on a diet, you got to have a cheat day every now and then, right? Um, oh, gosh, I remember myself. Okay, so uh, where do you get the proven scripts and objection handlers? Most of y'all got those from me. There's also other variations in our back office, a virtual office system, use other selling systems, selling, and then scripts and dialogues. There's a bunch of them there. But again, I do prefer you guys to use the scripts that I give you because those are my personal ones that I use that I like the most. And you guys, when is the perfect time to put these strategies into action? Today. Today, absolutely. Right now. Not tomorrow. Now. So what are you guys going to do after this class today? Eat lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Eat lunch and then. So yes. Yeah, so give ourselves some energy. We need food for energy.
energy and then what? I can take a poop. Then what? <laughs> We're gonna go and practice some expires, right? We're gonna either practice our script. We're gonna role play with someone. We're gonna get on the phone. We're gonna go door knock. We're gonna do something to put it into action and to make it happen. Okay, so we are at twelve thirty right now. Okay, so give me just one second. Let me go get the leads that we have from Elise. And then we're gonna start making some phone calls. Oh, so you guys should, do you have the scripts in here? I don't know if that's you have. The entire script. Uh, there, yeah, there. Oh, this objection. Okay, so that's not the Apple script. All right, so you guys all have your script books. I will get one for you in just one second. Oh. oh, okay, no worries. Well, thank you so much for coming out. Well, I got the earphones, so yeah. I'll follow up with you and then we're going to bring up some dirty for you. Do you want to Oh, okay, all right. Well, let me work on that after class. I'll have these to put together for you. And of course, you get a better call your script. Yeah, have a good script. So, follow your inspired script and start reading that. So, this is the so there's this guy. Okay, guys, so go to pull your expired script. When you got your expired script out? Okay, perfect. Okay, so your script, basically what we're going to do is, um, anybody who's online who needs this, let me know. Um, we're going to go ahead and read the first paragraph. It's basically our script, short and sweet. And then you guys, we have our motivating questions right down here. These are the questions you should internalize always because you need these three questions before you're done. Um, that's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, wait, no, you have an older version. Okay. Okay. All right, so yeah, it should go a little like this. Um, hi, I work with other people. Hi, Paul. Yes. Paul. Hi, Paul. I'm Paul. This is Sharice with Florida Luxury Realty. How are you today? I'm great. Wonderful. Paul, I'm calling from a real estate agent here in the area, and I noticed your home came off the market recently. I'm calling because I'm confident I can get your home sold. I was just curious. Are you still interested in selling? Yes, I am. Wonderful. Well, Paul, you know, I have uh, some time on Tuesday, or would Saturday be better for you? How about Saturday? Saturday, excellent. Mornings or afternoons best for you? Morning. Morning, perfect. About 10 a.m.? 
Sounds good. Why don't we watch Flyback on the phone? You don't have a soul. Where are we going on with you to? Uh, Miami. Oh, Miami. Beautiful down there. Great. And what we'll brings you to Miami? You got friends, family, job locations? Uh, family. Family. Excellent. All right. Wonderful. And, and Paul, how soon were you hoping you have been down there? I was hoping to be there already. Oh, wow. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Paul, when we sit down, it'll take about 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to show you why so many people choose me to help get them to places like Miami to be closer to family definitely sooner than later. Um, and Paul, let me go ahead and get this. If you don't mind, let me grab your email address. I'm going to go ahead and send you uh, a confirmation of our appointment. And this way you'll also have my direct contact information. What's the best email address for you? That's Paul, that's 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 great. All right, Paul, thank you so much for your time today. It was a real pleasure. I look forward to meeting you guys Saturday at 10 o'clock. Sounds good. Perfect. Right? Now, naturally what's going to happen. Yeah, but that's okay. That was a simple policy night. Paul's a nice guy. Uh, I'm not so nice. Um, so, but behind, okay, so you guys, behind that script, there's, you know, some more kind of go-to questions, just kind of flip over that. And then we have our objection handling, our rebuttal, right? So they're going to say one of these five rebuttals. For example, they might say, I'm going to stay with the same agent. They might say, I'm going to sell it myself. They could say, I'm going to take it off the market. Or, I've already found another agent. One that doesn't come up too often is where were you with my house? Why are you calling me now? Why are all these realtors all of a sudden interested in my property now? Where were you when it was on the market? Right? That comes up sometimes. All right, and based on what they say, um, you should have your script book in front of you. Remember, we're working on following directions. Okay. And uh, and that's where you're gonna have everything. So Tammy, I'm gonna play with you for a second. I want you to give me one of these objections, right? Okay. All right, so uh, ring ring. Hi, Tammy. Yes. Hi, Tammy. This is Sharice with Florida Luxury Realty. How are you today? Um, well, you're the fifth realtor to call me. So I'm okay. Uh, I can imagine. Some of them start early, don't they? Well, Tammy, listen, I'm a realtor in your area, and I'm confident I can get the home sold. I was just curious. Are you still interested in selling? Um, we're not. We're not. We're going to stay. You're going to stay in the house, so you guys decided to take it off the market? Mm -hmm. All right, well, Tammy, I see, and just out of curiosity, if the home did sell, where are we planning on moving to? Uh, we're staying in town. We were just going to, we were going to build new. But. Oh, okay. So you want to stay local still, mm -hmm. but maybe just something new for your growing family? Um, just, just set up the house. Okay, uh, totally understandable. And Tammy, how soon are we hoping to have made that transition? Um, we really weren't in a rush. So, okay, but maybe probably before the holidays so you can be settled in would be a good time, maybe? Um, well, with the new build, it would have probably been after the holidays, but... Okay, so you're looking to actually have something done from scratch, not necessarily an inventory yeah. home. Mm -hmm. Okay, great to know. Yeah, I'm very familiar with all the builders out there. Any particular projects that you're interested in? Maybe like that Epperson and that, that Crystal Lagoon? Um, well, we were interested in Epperson, but with all the drama, it's kind of the reason we decided to just call it quits. Okay, I can understand your frustration there. You know, there is a great community I'm familiar with. It's literally right across the street called Watergrass. Um, they have a beautiful layout, very high-end, luxurious. They maintenance their properties to the nines. Um, and this way, what's great with that community is, is you're right across the street. So you're not dealing with that inner traffic of everything that they have to deal with over in Epperson. Um, but the great thing is that you're right across the road. You have all the same lovely amenities and access to that without actually dealing with that. So, um, Tammy, you know, I'd definitely love to sit down and do a consultation with you guys, chat a little bit more about, you know, what we can do to get your home sold quickly for top dollar, and possibly still make that dream happen. I'm available Tuesday, or would Saturday be better for you? Well, actually, one of our friends is a realtor, so we're probably going to talk to them next. Okay, that's understandable. And, you know, Tammy, um, a lot of people don't realize, because right now I'm going to, I found another agent number two. Okay, so most people don't realize that no two agents are the same, even if they come from the same brokerage. Um, every agent has their own marketing strategy and years of experience. In Florida Luxury Realty, we have over 18 years of experience in selling homes like yours that didn't sell the first time around. And you know what, Tammy, really, you owe it to yourself to give us 15 to 20 minutes to show you what we do differently to get home sold for top dollar. Again, I'm available Tuesday or when Saturday do better for you. Um, I'm just really not interested right now. <laughs> Kill me, Tammy. All right, look, Tammy. Tammy, Tammy, Tammy. No, 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 let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. Okay.
Okay. So that was a great, that was a great practice. Okay. So now what I want you guys to do is I want you to go ahead and team up. And then you guys are going to do the same thing. I want you to don't be nice. Right? Do real life play. Give them, she gave me three or four different five objections, right? Where I want you guys to practice this. Be be yes. brutal to each other and, and 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 get it out, right? Get comfortable with this script. All right, so I'll practice with, with you. So I'm gonna have you two team up, have you two team up, and then you two team up. Okay, and those of you watching at home, practice, call someone, call another realtor friend that you know. Give them on the phone, practice this, or we practice this out loud in front of the mirror. Okay. All right, so we're going to do this for just a few minutes, then we're going to do some calls. It is 12.45 now. So let's go do this for about five or six minutes. So give at least two good objections and then switch, okay? Go. Hello. Uh, I just gave you the time Yeah, I had a chart on a Nike for two and a half hours. I obviously did not. I saw it I I'm only because I saw you I just reading the MLS because your house just came off the market and I was wondering if you were still No, we're taking it off. Yeah, take it off. Hang it off. Just out of curiosity, just to take it off the we find out who the Would you be willing to sit down and talk to me about this in a few minutes? I don't know when I'll talk to 
say that to you guys. All right, so, but if I left a voicemail, it would say, hey, I was calling about your home on Gumtree. Um, I had a couple questions. If you could please call me back. There's two phone numbers, so actually we'll call the second phone number now. Um, and what I do when I'm doing this presentation is I put the mute on really quick and then when they answer I just pull the mute off. So I'm just going to try to make a couple calls, see if we can connect with someone. Um, if not, I'm going to pass out these leads and you guys are going to call them. Okay. So get ready. Get ready. This one's in Lakeland, 149, which I don't understand how you did not sell a $149,000 house. Just the price point alone have a lot of people. Okay, sometimes you get disconnected ones. I only had one phone number on it, so I'm gonna take it out. All right, next one. Anybody open for Home Assassa? No, I'll skip it. Yeah. Um, well, it is 469. See, here, here's what a lot of people don't need to understand. For a listing, I'll drive wherever for the right price point. Because you guys remember, everything is done virtually. I may be at the most going to that property twice. I'm going there for my listing appointment and then going there for my photo shoot to do the last couple of things that need to be done, show the clients how the property needs to be shown, uh, setting up my lockbox, all those things. Sometimes I might even go out there once for the appointment if I know the home is definitely show ready. I don't feel like I need to go there and double check anything. Um, and I'm, I go prepared at the listing appointment with my sign in the trunk, act as if, my sign in the trunk and a lockbox in the car. Okay, so I'm ready and prepared. They say yes. I know it's a vacant property, it's already staged, it's ready to go. I just need to give my photographer the access, setting everything up, I'm going there one time. Okay, so I don't care if it's an hour away, even two hours away, if the price point is right. So, is somebody willing to do this one for more 69 at Home Assassin? Okay, thank you. Oh, would be me. Okay, yeah, because listings, okay, buyers are a whole other story. And here's a great thing, you guys, kind of like I went over with most of you in, in the recruiting appointment, is that, um, the way you want to eventually get your business set up is that buyers, you need to replace the word buyers with passive income. You want to focus on listings, 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 listings. You get the listing, you put the sign in the yard, somebody else sells it. You're going to get all these free buyer leads from it, right? But we know we can close, we can close a listing start to finish generally. Um, we can do a listing start to finish. I'm talking about your prospecting time, your research time, your, your actual, your appointment time. Your marketing, your closing, your negotiating, all of that. Scott says eight hours. I can teach you doing five or less, more like four or five. Versus a buyer, we can have 10, 20, 30, 40 plus hours into a buyer. So you need to think of buyers as passive income, meaning that we're going to focus on listings. That's our goal. We want listings, listings, listings. From every listing we have, we're going to attract a bunch of buyers. We sell those buyer leads out. Let somebody else who's hungry and who has more time to spend on those buyers go run with it and you get paid at least a 25% referral fee for doing nothing but having that sign in the yard. You don't even have to call and qualify them. You get a call on your 1-800 number, right? You call away and hey, wait, I got this buyer lead. Do you want to run with it 25%? Yeah, great. I send you, I forward you the, the 800 thing. You call it, you qualify, you show, you write the offer, you do everything I close the check at the end of the day, right? Because now I'm freeing up those 30 hours and imagine how many more listings I could get with 30. 30 hours of time that I'm not working with a buyer. But they put the same price point, right? Because they're calling on that price point. I'm going to get the paint the same commission check, but I'm going to do this in four to five hours. Now, who knows how many hours it could be. Okay, I'm going to try to call this last one here in Tampa. We do have two phone numbers. Three, one, three, nine, six, two. And you guys, you want to see more of this in action coming on Saturday. Saturday, you guys, I am here with you making calls. I make my calls on speakerphone so that you can hear me when I do get into a call and you can hear me handle it. And then when I do set these appointments, I'm giving them out to you guys. I generally do it in the order, the order that you show up. So whoever's here first gets the first appointment I book. Second person gets the second appointment I book. And what time is that? Um, Saturdays are 10 to 1. 
At least that's the committed time that I'm sitting here calling with you. I'm still kind of multitasking at the same time because I do have other things to do. But I'm at least here in the room. Like, what was I doing on Saturday? I was I was doing research for CMA while I was making phone calls. So I literally have my phone here, my list here. I'm dialing while it's ringing. I'm looking at calls and I'm posting on Facebook, right? I'm doing calls and these different things. I mean, I understand you guys are quite there, but you will be there. Um, okay, that one didn't answer. Okay, sorry, not many of these actually answered, but I'm gonna pass these out and you guys are going to you guys are going to call them right now today. All right, so get your script in front of you. Pick up the phone. And we're gonna start calling. Yes. And then I'm gonna listen to you. You get into a call, I can come over and listen, kind of coach you through what to say or you know you. So yesterday, so these are leads that were expired yesterday. What is this? Is we have a whole bunch of different phone numbers. Uh, Florida Conference Association of Seven. I don't know. I would call them. They buy and sell houses. <laughs> so when you guys get like investors and stuff like that, where it looks like a business, call them. Hey, do you have a dedicated buyer's agent? Are you taking on more buyer's agents to help find great properties for you? And what about listing? I would love to get in with you and help you list these properties. I'm sorry the person here didn't get the job done the first time. I wish I would have met you six months ago, but hey, here I am now. I would love to chat with you about me getting your home sold. But if they have like a bank, like Bank of America. Oh, no, don't worry about this. Yeah, it goes yeah. or if it's like a builder, like they call, if you, like you call them and they say, D.R. Horton, then skip that one. <laughs> there you yeah. go. No, no, you can while you got D.R. Horton on the phone say, hey, I'm a proactive agent in the community. You see, I'm a hardworking realtor. I just called you looking for expired leads. Uh, can I do any open houses in your community? Right? What do I got to do to get in to be your listing agent for your new community properties? Right? Hop on every opportunity. Okay. You said something. They are still, uh, they're going to expire soon. We can't call them if I see you okay, have three days to expire. What I've handed you is expired. Listing. No, no, I know. But, but for ones that you see are about to expire, you go there and you do a preview. And you, you can't try to talk to them about listing your house. But I'm just doing a preview in hopes that I'm going to bump into the owners. I'm also going to drop my card on the counter when I'm there showing or previewing it. And then three days later when the home expires, I'm not going to, hey, remember me? I was here last week actually previewing this house. I didn't realize it was going to be expiring. But, you know, I was in the neighborhood that I popped by. Yeah, let's talk more about how we can get this home sold for you. We can't say, like, oh, okay, if your house is not selling the, the next week, which is your last week, are you, are you what's your time? No. I can't say that. No. Answer. They are in a broker relationship. You cannot sell them at all. Now, what generally happens, though, is you're there, and now they're talking to you. If they talk to you, they say, well, what do you do to sell homes? This bozo hasn't gotten the job done. Then say, you know, I'd love to chat with you about that a little more. Um, what's your tomorrow night look like? Right, make an immediate appointment. Um, then you can talk to them, but they have to approach you. You cannot approach them. Okay, big difference. Talk to them, you can still talk to them. Yeah, if they talk yeah. to you, you just and, and here's where you guys. I tell you to document everything. This is where you want to have your your Google spreadsheet or your Google Docs, and you document every part of the conversation. I went to this property. Um, I went there. I had to preview the home. The owner approached me. And was asking me these questions. I told him I could follow up with him, blah, 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 blah. But it needs to be very clear that they approached you. You cannot approach them. Okay? Because that happens sometimes where they hired somebody, they're not doing a good job, and now they're out there wanting to pick another agent before they fire this guy. Right? So that happens. But again, they have to approach you. Okay? You should hear some phones ringing. So it's going to be loud. I'll do it on the same room. Well, if you just start dialing, if, if they pick up, you can walk out and go to the conference room or something. Yeah. But the big thing is to start dialing the phone. 
Just start with the one point. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Um, well, a little bit of water. Yeah. Uh, here's St. Pete. Uh, Turban oh, Springs, just kind of right before yeah. the So it's called Turban Springs, Palm Harbor, Stay Watch, and Dunning, and Lincoln. Because I didn't go to Lock and Dunning, and then people yeah. just that uh, one appointment. Mm -hmm. Well, again, remember, these are expired listings. It's not a preview appointment. If you call them to get an appointment, you're going there and you're doing a listing presentation. Well, you're yeah. Can, yes, that is how it's supposed to be. I know you set up the other ones a little bit more awkwardly. Um, but that's the goal. If you follow the script and the words that I've given you, and you follow that script and you call these people, you no, are making is, an appointment yeah. to talk to them about listing their homes. This way, I will cut Not it. Not a preview. Yeah. Yeah. This way, I can. Because now I'm just sort of going there, but I'm not, it's not really a listing. Yeah. Well, I mean, everything is, you know, it's an investment of time. You know, you go there, you're, you're talking to them, you're building relationships. Yeah, well, that's fine, they're close, but for everyone to go to appointment, I'm wasting, you know, like three hours between going there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and that's, that's where when you, when you search the MLS for your expires, or even these, like why uh, Alana did this morning, where she said, hey guys, here's a bunch of uh, leads that are outside the area that I'm willing to work. Does anybody else want to work these? Instead of just letting them get wasted, she handed them back out to other people. Yeah, and you can do the same thing too. So if, let's say on a sheet, there's six people. And three of them you're willing to work, three you're not. Make a copy of that sheet, cross out the ones that you are working, and then give that sheet to somebody else. And here's just three leads that I'm not willing to work if somebody else wants to work these. And so before I call them, I didn't call those people. I mean, I give them the lead after I make that appointment or before. No, no, I'm just saying on that. So normally the sheets that I give you on Saturday, there's like yeah. six different leads, right? There's like six of these, right? Yeah. And let's say, you know, there's three of them on there you're willing to work, but three you're not. Right, make a copy of that. So you have two copies, you have your copy, and then you have a copy you give to somebody else, but you cross out the ones that you are working with, the ones that you're trying to call. But the three that you're not willing to call, keep those open and say, here, does somebody want these? Yeah, okay. I don't want them to go to waste. That's awesome. Right? I want to show you the email you've got from Marty. It's simply in a gold dimension. So you need to call him and say, what's it going to take to win this? Win this? Oh, counter offer. Okay, counter offer is good. Oh, did he? What did you see? I don't know. And the subject, he said, oh, I thought it was counter offer. Contract. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so they're saying that most likely they're going to go with the other offer because it's going to be Here's only a thousand dollars more. They might have countered the convention. Okay, so I would call this guy and say, hey, what if you're after your 82? Will that convince you to go with us? Okay. As long as your buyer says it's okay. If your buyer says it's okay, you say, yeah, absolutely. Because if he go with the other one, can't get too late, just get another offer by then. No, as long as he hasn't signed that one, which he said he's really ready for. He's ready for him to make a decision on to sign it. It sounds to me like they're going to go with the convention. But they're waiting for the seller. So, which is understandable. So, and the seller, and the seller said, I want to go to the convention. But he didn't sign it. And I called him immediately and I told him, you know what? My offer is raised about $1,000. Mm -hmm. By law, he can still go with me or, or 